Okay, everyone. My it's the next morning after applying the boiled linseed oil and turpentine to my dulcimer, and as you can see, I guess you can see, I've not done anything to it since I hung it up. It's still got the kind of like little runs and and stuff on it, fingerprints and stuff like that. So I just want to give you, I'm not going to video the whole thing of me buffing it. <clears throat> I just mostly wanted to show you what I'm going to do to it. So for this one, I'm going to use my, I have to get me a screwdriver to open it with. I'm just going to use my Johnson paste wax and uh, in earlier videos I showed you my the butcher's bowling alley wax that's the good really good stuff this this wax here is the Johnson's is good uh, to me it seems like it's a little easier to work with because it's kind of it don't dry as hard as that bowling alley wax dries. Get me some rags to lay across my lap so I don't get wax all over my clothes and boiled linseed oil. But uh, the Johnsons don't seem to dry I guess the best way to put it, it's a little easier to buff out than the bowling alley wax. But like I was also saying in an earlier video, I've used uh, the paste shoe polish on uh, woodwork before. And I'm sure it'll work on this too if you want to try that. <clears throat> You could even, if you want to just use nothing but a paste shoe polish type finish on it, you could use this method I'm about to show you. You could just put the, if you wanted to stain it a brown and just let it be nothing but a wax type finish, just get you some brown paste shoe polish in the little cans about the, about the size of a snuff can. I got. I know I have some here somewhere. I just don't know where. But just put that on your dulcimer, and uh, I used to use that a lot when I made little crafts, just to sell uh, inexpensive crafts. I just used a paste shoe polish, put it on the craft, just rub it in all over, and uh, then buff it, buff the excess off with steel wool, and then once you do that buff it with a rag and that makes a nice little inexpensive uh, quick finish. I mean you could even if you wanted to if you wanted to uh, if you was planning on keeping your your dulcy more maybe once a year you could uh, unstring it just apply you a new coat of the shoe polish and it'll last you just as long as anything else would I'm sure uh, a lot of the old timers back in the day, they might have, more than likely I'd say a lot of those had nothing on them, uh, a lot of the old builders. And that's one reason I kind of like these, uh, I like using a lot of different, I like a combination of a lot of different woods <coughs> on these uh, kits and it's really one of my favorite things to do is make a combination of different woods on uh, my instruments because if you think about it back then and that's I had read one as y'all know I call a lot of my call a lot of my dulcy mores a hog fiddle and I had read on one page I can't remember where it was but one time they thought 
uh, one reason that the old traditional dulcimers, uh, the name Hogfield come about is because maybe they would go out and uh, when they was wanted to build one, the only place they could find any wood is maybe pull a board off the hog lot and uh, and use that wood to build a hog field with. So, but regardless of whether they did or not, or whether there's any truth to that, I can I can still believe in my mind that back then chances are uh, a lot of those people were were poorer, maybe as far as wealth goes. Uh, than what a lot of homeless people are today. The uh, only thing that didn't make those people back then homeless is they did have a little shanty or not much more than a shed that they lived in, so I don't think they had to, could afford to go out and buy an old fancy um, book matched wood to build a dulce more with. So I'm going to turn my camera down here toward my lap so you can See what I'm doing, and pretty much I've already got my little. I keep me a, a rag in my. Well, actually, I got two in this one, but this one's almost empty. But I keep me a rag in my wax, just so it stays stay saturated. Because every time you have to resaturate a rag. That's that much uh, finish that you lose. So I'm just going to do it on the back here. As you've seen, I've I've not done any kind of buffing or anything yet to the dulcimer. I just left the fingerprints or whatever just like they were when I finished doing it. So just uh, rub your wood wax or shoe polish, whatever it is that you've got. Right now I'm getting around the feet. Make sure I get around those real good. But I just put a, a pretty good coating on everything. And like I say, for the purpose of this video, I'm only going to show you what I'm doing on the back of it here. Just it's really easy what I'm doing. Probably could have just told you and not even have to do a video and you'd understood the process of it, but I'm going to show you anyway. So that's all I'm going to do for now. All I'm going to apply for now. But usually what I do, and I'm not doing it just because I want to keep the video short. I feel like I've been keeping my videos too long for you guys. And I hope you're not getting bored with them, but uh, usually what I do is I I will apply the wax to the whole dulcimer first, and uh, I'll, I'll put it everywhere before I start buffing anything. But in this case, I'm gonna only do the back, so I can just give you a quick rundown of what I do. So once I apply the wax everywhere, then I just I take my steel wool and I just begin buffing, just buff with the grain, just like you would sand it. Just go with the with the grain where you where you can. There may be a few places like around these little pegs you have to get the end of the peg grain or as you know on those scroll buttons, you may have to get the get those scroll buttons. But just Buff with the grain, do what you have to do. If, if you go around like these little feet on the back, or if you go around the scroll buttons, uh, and get that wax cleaned up a little bit, then go go back with the grain. So you, that way you remove any, maybe little scuffs that the, that you do across the grain, little cross grain scuffs that you get. But uh, that's pretty much all they are to it, using the wax type finish, if you want to do it my way. I mean, like I say, if you, if you don't even, uh, you don't even have to use the boiled linseed oil if you don't want to. 
but I guess it's too late for you now if you've done done it but uh, it'll just add a little bit more protection the wax itself really won't bring out the grain of the wood like the boiled linseed oil so I would I would prefer if I was building my own dulcimer I would prefer doing the boiled linseed oil uh, and wax compared to doing wax only but that'd be up to you and but of course if you was if you was going to do the colored uh, shoe polish be really wouldn't be a lot of a lot of sense of you using the boiled linseed oil you can just because the colored shoe polish would kind of highlight the grain so that's about that's about all I do that's what I just done right there I don't know if you can tell any difference but it, it actually looks looks really nice when you use that uh, shoe polish that way or not shoe polish but the wax so once I once I still wool the whole dulce more then I'll take me a soft cloth and I'll just buff the whole thing with a soft cloth and uh, and that's all they are to it and it makes a really nice finish and dulcimer Dan built me a one of his Kentucky style dulcimers and he told me all he used was a beeswax finish on it I think and uh, it looks really good and I like to cut it's starting to age a little bit now changing colors I like the looks of it where it start beginning to age a little bit so you can even use beeswax if you wanted to rub it in I have used some beeswax that's pretty hard before and I've had to heat it a little bit with a hairdryer get it warmed up and then rub it on wood I don't know how Dulcim or Dan does his but anyway I'm gonna leave you with that and uh, leave it leave it at that that this video will this will be part three of step 14 the finish and or the sanding and applying the finish this will be part three and pretty much the final the final episode of step 14 and uh, the next one will be step 15 I may yeah, step 15 will be installing the nut and uh, I may do 15 and 16 together installing the nut and installing the zither pins do those together or something but uh, do a little combo video of those so I'll see you next video thank y'all